India's third lunar mission attempt has sent back images of the South Pole of the Moon. The photos, coming just days after Russia's failed attempt to land, will help India's space agency locate a safe landing place for the rover. The South Pole, or the dark side of the Moon, has become of interest to scientists, and not just Pink Floyd fans, as they believe it could hold frozen water. If the landing is successful, India will be the first country to land a rover on the South Pole. So it's sent back images. I guess we don't have them. But uh, joining us live now is astronomer at large, Fred Watts. Fred Watson. Good to see you, Fred. Have you seen these images at all from India? Uh, just some of the earlier ones, yes. I saw, what, and what does it uh, show? Uh, uh, lots of craters deep in shadow, uh, which is kind of what you expect from the South Pole region of the Moon, mm. uh, where there are, there are places where the sun never shines uh, because the craters are so deep and the, the angle that the sun is uh, shining at is so low, it's very low on the horizon. Oh. And that's really why this is all of interest because there are places as i said where the sun never reaches that might be where there is frozen water on the surface of the moon so is this what the russians and the indians were, were racing over uh that's right i think the, the the real sort of focus of the race was that no nation has yet landed a spacecraft successfully uh, in the south pole of the moon but it is an area of great interest it's where the american artemis uh, project uh, will eventually aim to land humans uh, so there was uh, there's a little bit of kudos in being the first nation to put uh, a spacecraft down in that region and i think that is really the focus of the race well, okay so what happened what went wrong with the russians it Really interesting. Uh, it looks as though uh, it was so the spacecraft was in orbit. This is Luna 25, the first uh, Russian sp uh, spacecraft going to the moon in 47 years. Uh, it was in orbit around the moon, uh, apparently very successfully after a 10 day flight from Earth. Uh, there was a, a braking burn of its rocket motor uh, that was supposed to put it in an orbit that would bring it closer to the moon's surface. But it looks as though that was 50 percent more than what it should have been. And that was enough to slow the spacecraft down enough that it simply crashed on the on the surface of the moon. Uh, we're not being told any more uh, why that happened, whether it was a software failure or an engine failure or maybe even a transmission failure. But uh, that's that seems to be the reason uh, why the crash occurred. So just back up again. So the so the the Indians at the moment, they're leading the race. Is that fair to say? Well, <laughs> they're the only ones in the race yeah. at the moment. Well, behind the Ameri uh, so uh, in front of the Americans. Yeah, so th that's right. So the Artemis pro program uh, has not yet uh, landed a spacecraft on the moon. There was a very successful mission towards the end of last year, which was a dry run for an orbital flight, which will probably take place next year uh, with uh, 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 US astronauts on board. Uh, that will take uh, them around the moon's backside, a uh, really in interesting yeah. orbit, then come back to Earth without a landing. Landings uh, suspected to be in, or expected to be round about 2025, maybe even 2026. So, <clears throat> so why, why is there this interest? Is it, is it because they just want to get to this unexplored southern part of the moon? Is that why there's this, this renewed interest that the, the moon is once again the holy grail yes although there's a little bit more to it than that because uh, if if you do find significant reserves of uh, water ice on the moon and we expect that will be the case then what you've got there is rocket fuel uh, because water can be dissociated into hydrogen and oxygen using solar power uh, and once you've got that then you've got the, the the wherewithal to provide fuel for future missions whether they're in orbit around the moon or perhaps in the long term going to somewhere Col like mars or, or even colonize well, that's a word that I don't tend to use very much. I think there's a, there's a, uh, you know, that th there is a possibility that we might well see a permanent occupation on the moon over the next over coming decades. Uh, whether that will result in anything remotely like colonization is a different matter. Uh, but yeah, a permanent base on the moon makes a lot of sense from a scientific perspective and as a staging post, yeah. perhaps to send humans to Mars. Okay, so what about are there resources that could be mined, Fred? Uh, that's another possibility. Um, the the water is certainly the the main interest at the main moment. Uh, it is also possible that there's a material called helium three on the moon, which is effectively a a really clean uh, power so uh, so, uh, a really key, clean material mm. for nuclear power. You're a wise man, Fred Watson. There you go. <laughs> you learn something new every day, folks. It's stunning stuff, isn't it? Thank you so much.